Paul Zuma podcast show. Zombie. Zombie Chronicles. One year earlier, it been a long day in July, with heat rains ravaging through South Carolina, even through night time, the long fallen the temperatures are cold down noticeably. My shirt still stuck to my back. I wondered what good that shower had, had done that I had taken before meeting Sherry. A rush of wind blew through my hair as he rode the top of the ferris wheel, then, breathed, then stopped hovering in midair. I breathed and relaxed and listened to the distant screams, music and laughter echo below us. Sherry sat down stuff set down the stuffed pig, pig a one fur in the ring toss and folded her hands in her lap enjoying the silence I dared a quick look at the stuffed animal fighting with herself we would be proud of sinking to the ground guys back at school surely would have suggested the latter but I don't care granted isn't a great giant teddy bear I bet twenty bucks trying to win it win the show seemed happy with the little Plush pink prize, nevertheless, she squeezed my hand. I smiled. I rocked the cart back and forth from my legs. Hey, stop it, Sherry said, twinning her, her fingers between my hair. But you told me you loved it when if someone shook the car at the very top. I do, too. Love the adrenaline rush. She smiled and battled her lashes at me. Her whole demeanor screamed flirty, so I inched close to wrap my arm around her. Pull her closer. Do you want to play games or make out? She whispered suggestively. Her eyes sparkled like big oxalines as I gazed into them. We had liked each other for months. We'd been shamelessly stealing glances at each other. So I finally popped the courage, courage to ask her out. It was our first date. I'd been dying to kiss all night. What do you think? I asked with her smile. She inclined her head as though in thought. At that same moment, a piercing scream echoed from below us. Forgetting the most of our first intimate moment, peered down to the darkness of the covering mass. What's going on down there? Sherry asked. I don't know. I squirmed to get a better look. Better view. But the still gods of the ferries were blocked out of my view from where we were dangling. All I could see were the red and blue lights flashing in the distance, blinking in ribbons of sound of blurring silence. I leaned out. I could count five police cars speeding towards the mid- midway. What's happening? Sherry asked again, this time more quietly, as though she was trying, she was talking to herself. I paid no attention and continued to scan the commotion below. A man tumbled around the same moment a grief of people pounced on him. From up above, they looked like they were attacking him with their bare arms and legs. Sherry grabbed my shoulder and gave it a hard squeeze to get my attention. Oh my gosh, Dean, I think a gang of thugs are attacking the people lying. I shook my head. It can't be. We lived in a family tourist town. Its biggest crime consists of kids stealing sweets from the local supermarket. And old ladies complaining about such Friday night litter. The porches, the crime bite was so light, low, the med- 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 misbedievers made the front page. I couldn't even remember the last time I'd been at a public beach or any kind of vicious attack. Maybe it's nothing, I said, my brain trying to just lay pictures before my eyes. I'm sure it doesn't look like nothing, Sherry said. You think they were on drugs? I shrug her hesitating. I wasn't naive enough to think there was no drugs while I lived, but to see these effects creeped me out big time. Bang, bang, before I could, could answer the shots. Echo for the nearing cars. I wrapped my arm around Sherry and forced my head down the way. I seen intelligent in all these action movies. It looks like the police are firing at the crowd, I yelled. No, they can't be. She clenched her, her chest. My sister's down there. I hope she's okay. A ride jerked forward. As we started to descend, Sherry leaned over me to peer at the blinking lights on the bar that rotated inside the wheel. I grabbed her hand. We'll find your sister, I promise. Thanks, Dean. 
A mute scream tore from the air, followed by growls and hisses. What's that noise? Sherry asked, frankly, currency below us. Praying past the yellow bulbs, twinkling all around me, I tried to see what was happening below. My senses full alert because of the danger we were in. I threw a stray bullet would hit us, or one of the drug crazed people might decide to attack us. We had to get out of here, there, fast, before something happened. A cold chill rushed through me as the cart passed at a wooden platform. I scanned the area that most possible escape route. Crazed weirdos are biting and tearing. The flash of screaming innocent bystanders and blood abstaining their clothes and the asphalt beneath their skin. My stomach protested readily to hurl all the greasy hot dogs, funnel cakes, candy cane, cane they'd eaten. My mind screamed, this can't be true. People can't go around biting each other like animals. It was a joke. I knew from the grotesque, salty, metallic smell wafting from the air that the blow was all too real. It wasn't a joke, but the grossest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Dean, what's happening? Sherry asked, shaking my shoulder frankly. I have no idea. We've got to get out of here. The possessed people shuffled, shuffled towards us, my pulse pounding in my ears. I spun quickly in my hopes of getting out the other way. The entrance blocked for some more public people flooding in. The silver lion diviners dropped to the line, ground with a land clang. We're trapped, Jerry said, trembling my left, right, my arm tight. No, I shook my head verbally. Don't even think that. We'll climb up the ferris wheel. And if that doesn't work, I hesitated, considering my words. Then we'll fight, I said, suppressing a gag at the rotten smell. Guttural sounds, strange growls emanated from the group. They stared us down like they wanted to rip from our flesh. Their greenish yellow crack, crack skin to all clothes, white eyes, contacts, a wide, wicked case of contracts, liquid latex, special effects. I had an idea, idea, but I was ready to take them on. A girl with blonde blonde hair inched closer. She looked dead and the head unnaturally screwed. Sudden recognition hit me. It was a jolt. Sherry's sister, Jenny! Sherry shouted, her naked voice overwhelmed with emotion. Oh my gosh, what happened to you? You're creeping me out. Jenny suddenly lunged at me, snapping at her jaw like a rabid dog. She came within only inches from sinking her teeth into me. Crit tud tud. When the police had five shots, Jenny, whatever she was, crashed down to the ground. Shock beyond belief. Sherry leaned over the cot door, getting letting loose her of a stuffed animal. It fell to the ground, right next to the, the thing that looked remotely like Jenny. He, he, her gaze darted to the girl, policeman holding the gun. You shot my sister. I'm oh, sorry, miss, but she's not your sister anymore, he shouted. She, she would have killed and eaten the both of you. More of the possessed groups shuffled towards us. My heart raced. I clenched my fists, ready to take down anything in my path. I slid my me- leg over the bar, preparing to jump out of the cart and fight when one of the co- f- policemen fumbled with the controls. He took a, a, we took off with a jerk. I fell back into Jerry, Jerry's arm. He all shot up about five feet in the air. The things lunged at us, shaking the bottom of the car. So violently, we nearly fell out. Sherry clanged onto me with a death grip. The group continued with it. They gruntled, gruntled, trying to him. I swore. I was trapped in some kind of lucid nightmare. What are they? Sherry screamed in my ear. What's going on? What happened to Jenny? Why was, why was she, why, why was she like that? I steadied myself up by holding the still with one hand and wrapped the other around her as I tried to make sense of what was happening. Below us, a group of possessed people seemed to have multiplied, holding up their arms as they wanted to ride to. I dared another peek at the edge and we gratted it instantly. The whole gathering looked like something of a horror film. Blood covering their clothes and caking their skin. Even some tumbled and started to stumble towards the officer who shot anyone or anything who got too close. Hang on, kids, the officer said. After another yank, we sped into the sky, stopping at every top. Stopping at the very top. This time, the shake of the cart for thrills of it, making out, was the last thing on my mind. That policeman, he, he that caught, shot my sister, she said. From grass, she buried her face into my chest and wept. I pulled her close, not sure that her words would comfort 
the giver. Some shots were fired, followed by ear piercing screams, and then nothing panic ensued from other riders. Still stuck on the wheel at various positions. Better to go up than go down. I figured we had to at least 150 feet up in the air, and we feel safe from whatever is happening below. My cell phone rang, jolted me out of stupor. I fumbled to my fo- for pocket and answered the call. Dean? Dad, I said. What's going on? Oh, son, thank God you're alive. You don't tell my destination. Where are you? He asked, his voice betraying an edge. I'm in date with Sherry. We're stuck on the top of a ferris wheel at a beach. It isn't moving, Dad. I think everyone's dead down there. I don't know. It's all. Just so... It's crazy, Dad. Just like some kind of horrible movie. We're coming to pick you up. And and then we're getting the heck out of town. Too dangerous, I said. I know this is going to sound absolutely crazy, but you've got to believe me. People turn into some kind of cannibals and attack people. I know, don't worry, I'll be, I'll be armed. I'll get you out of this. I promise. Get, get it. Got it, son? Why are you going? Your brother's flying us to the island of Cramps, where we are safe. These things are attacking nearby in Motel Beach. We're going to get far away from here, as fast as we can. When they have at the end of the phone, the glass shattered with a crash. It's followed by my mum's piercing scream. I grasped at the, at the line and went dead. Dad? shouted. I shouted. Dad? Chapter 2 One year ago, a deadly virus decimated the world leaving swarms of brain-eating zombies in its wake. Survivors rushed to makeshift fortresses, walled in cities, protected by towering concrete walls, and a military force to be reckoned with. I managed to make to one of these safe havens my brother, my parents, and they afforded me a chance to spend the whole last year shielded the gloom that rocked the land. My brother, on the other hand, decided to leave the safe confines and continue fighting with the U.S., army to fight an onslaught on the undead. He came a top notch zombie hunter, but my parents and I didn't see much of him after that. My mother feared he might not come back alive, if at all. Initially the virus immediately turned everyone into zombies. It's a type O or A blood. The rest of us seemed safe as long as we didn't get exposed through broken skin. We never knew what really caused the outbreak. When scientists thought that they had figured out, the walls had changed slightly. The virus mutated. Now if someone was bitten or scratched, it would take, give up five days before they turned. Unless they died, that meant the change came immediately. I tried to make the best of the situation. It wasn't that bad. A house had electricity and water. I led a fairly normal uh, teenage life. Right up to... The, uh, I had to leave to jeopardise my safety and concentrate on my future for the sake of a girl I only just met, but I really had no option. She was scheduled for lethal injection. I could not stand and watch that happen. I planned on stopping the execution, even though I knew the stakes were high. After all, I had been caught by the authorities. They would have probably booted me out on, into the zombie land. It was a fate I did not have a subject myself to. I knew my parents too. But after pondering it and considering my options, and the girls, which were none, I realised a chance worth taking. I had to save her, no matter what. I could only hope my parents would understand. My plan was bold and daring, sneaking, as a proper rescue mission would always should always be. I knew that getting her out of the clock clinked fast before anyone noticed was the key to success. I smoothed my hands down my crisp white scrubs, smirking beneath my borrowed surgical mask as I adjusted. I knew I only needed a good disguise in order to get past the soldiers. I was proud of myself for so easily snatching the medical uniform from the linen room. Lucas, a friend of mine, I laughed at the sight of me in the, bag, the baggy cotton get-up. 
I thought this was some kind of James Bond mission, not a pyjama party. Ha ha, very funny, I muffled out of beneath the mask. I lo- he looked me right up and down. Well, you look ridiculous, but it definitely fit the part. Well, secret agents have to hide the identity somehow, right? I prompted him in the arm. He grinned. Lucky for me, Lucas had a security consultant to take me into the isolation area of the clinic. He owed me a favour for a while. Uh, about time I paid up. I thought I knew I, I could always count on Lucas. He was a fitness buff with huge arms. He was the one who could took the part, who fit the part. He made for a perfect soldier with his colourful uniform, with army boots and buzz, buzzed head. This is a huge risk you're taking, but I completely understand. Lucas swiped a card over a control pad. The door opened with a sit and loud clink. Be careful, though. Whatever you do, do not unsubmit her. The virus is flooding through her veins. A good reason for putting her in quarantine. Don't worry, I don't plan on joining bike club any time soon, I promise. With a quick glance back, I walked through a heavy steel door. As soon as the door closed behind me, it hit me. There's no turning back now. I took a sharp breath and focused my gaze ahead. The room looked just like any other sick bed, complete with sterile looking white walls and strong spit bleach like aroma, a plethora of medicines. On the far right was a huge lamp that was cast on an actual glow and tilted floor. On the far left, a narrow bed with white sheets that were arranged around a frail woman held me. I had the right room. I took a hesitant step forward and stopped. Sunny and sure whether or not I was going to do the right thing. What if she had turned? What if it's too late to help her? Am I risking my safety for nothing? Fighting for myself, I took a step back. Suddenly, Val rose to her feet. Her fists were clenched. Her eyes were wild with terror. I pulled down my mask before she got the chance to pound me. Hey, it's me, Dean, I said. You know I've been bitten, but why you, you look? You shouldn't be here. You know it being anywhere near you is a death sentence. I slowly unwrapped the bandages from the arm and cringed. The zombie might look worse, far more worse than I appreciated. Green pus drained from the open wound on her lower arm. It reeked her dead, rotting flesh. That's bad, eh? Val asked with a, what, when she saw my ghastly expression, her voice echoing off the white walls and confined in the isolation room. She brushed back her dishevelled long brown hair. It's funny how fate works. I spent... So long trying to find you, her voice quivered as tears welled up in her brood eyes. Now I have. We won't even get to spend one day together. I let, let out my a long breath. Don't talk like that. We have plenty of time together. So much time, you'll probably get sick of me. How do you figure that out? I feel record. I don't think I'll ever get, get sick of you. Because of, I have a possible cure. She cocked her brow. You mean experimental spirit? Yep, I snatched a bag of vials from the lab. She gasped. Do you know what happened if you're caught? I don't care. I'd do anything to save you. I wasn't lying. I barely knew the girl a few hours. There's something about her, something worth saving, even at risk of imprisonment or death. Funny thing was, I never thought I had a kind of sacrificial saviour in me, especially for a girl I wasn't in love with. But after hearing her story, I knew it wasn't anything I wouldn't go for her. She needed me, and I was going to be there. I can't believe you'd go through all this for me. Basically, a stranger, it's impressive. Thank you. She softly touched my arm. But those vowels haven't been tested, so there's no guarantee. Doc was sure this batch would work. He told me that it was a version of major breakthrough. So it's worth a shot, no pun intended. She smiled at my accidental joke. Okay. If you say so, give me the permission. I'd rather be a big pig than one of those brain munching things out there. I can't, Val. It's too early. The virus has to go into your system for, well, for a set amount of time. For the medicine, there's a chance to work. I didn't have the heart to give her the medicine. Couldn't be given to her until. Tell her I couldn't give her the medicine to be given to her until she returned of zombie process. It usually took about five days. With the rotation of the virus now, yeah, she's right, she's right to now. She's just not now. Set an amount of time. How long do you think before you can get a bit to me, she said, starting to a bit more panicked in the morning. Just a little while more. You know, I don't have that kind of time. She threw the bandage back and pressed firmly on the tape. Be with this, it then.
They knew no moles. I've been compri- prom- comprised. There'd been any co- moment, minute to kill me. Humanely, of course. My words, pier- her words pierced my heart, especially since I knew I rang the truth. It didn't, I, if I didn't intervene, she was doomed. That isn't happening. I'm here to break you out. My plan was to sneak Val out of, to take her to the next sheltered city and give her some secret potion that the doctor had been working on for months. I suppose it could her the nasty neck. Crotania virus has spread across the USA and the globe, turning men, women, children into virus like beings with a burning f- desire to feed on human flesh. Really? She grabbed my arm as it was getting. Really? Well, that's the case. We're waiting for. We can't go unless Luca comes back and gives me a go ahead. If we run into the general, our plan is screwed. It'll just be a minute. She nodded and then she placed her. Hands on the hips, her gaze imploring us. Imploring. Is your brother going to help us? I haven't told Nick anything right now. He just flip out, and right now we need him focus. We want our plan to work. I want to meet him. I need to meet him. You will. I begged him to take us to the next city. Told him we have a delivered some antibiotic for the doc. Great. Think, think your smoking felt plan will trust. Will work? Trust me, nobody will respect a thing. So for what's the plan? For starters, we're flying. Making it up to the roof was the only way to get the head past the heavy security. Nevertheless, even though flying was the safest option in those days, nothing was the safe bet anymore. Wait, did you say we're flying? Yep. Didn't I mention the Nick's a pilot? What did I need to tell you what Robert was when he was hiding a secret stowaway in the back of her, her helicopter? Oh, well, I'll worry about it later. I'm sure Nick would understand once I told him his entire story. The door burst open and Lucas peered in. You guys ready? There isn't much time. Motioned her in the, out of the cell. I motioned her out of the cell and pointed her under the gurney. Hop on! I help Val into the gurney, then thrust the sheet over her body up to her neck, mimicking medical protocol for handling disease of the way to the morgue. You've got to, pay, got to play dead, Nuka said. So no blinking, Val blotted her sweat from her brow. Are you going to be okay? I asked. Uh, annoying the sudden dread in my pit of my stomach, a, cl- a clenched jaws, a jaw clenched. Don't worry, I'll bring it home the Oscar. My life depends on it. As I wheeled down the long corridor past a group of soldiers, I was hit by a rush of adrenaline like I never felt before. Danger aside, I was having the time of my life. I never wanted my parents' version of the normal teenage life. I'd been thrust into the middle of a real life or dead. You think about it, zombie complets. The kind people had been joking about and making video game movies for years. I am a brother who chose the military for his own country's adventure. I lived for that stuff, always seeking a thrill, a crave being where the action was, and finally I was immersed in a free rescue. When we approached the guards, we, a chill ran across my spine. We all knew that, that if we didn't get past the squad, it was all over before we even really got started. We put in our eyes, Luca said, without so much as a nervous quicker, quiver in his voice. The sergeant shook his head. It never ends, does it? Nope. Luca looked at me. You got this from here? I nodded and moved down the corridor fast, my heart thumping against my chest. Once they were round the corner, I bolted. Metal wheel, wheels screeched against the tidal tile floor in protest at speed. I was pushing a put hope Val didn't fly off the thing. We took the corners. The hell turned right and shot left and right. Again, OK, it's safe, said I said, stopping. To, I started to strip off to my white pants. While Nick sees me in scrubs, would blow the entire plan, especially if he, if he knew I was up to no good. She sat up abruptly. Please tell me you, you have clothes on under there. Of course, now come on. I helped her down and pointed the head of the pad this way. We raced through the corridor, up the stairs, finally reached the pedipod. 
pedipert, there's a healthy gust of wind ju- rushed through my hair. Fowls jumped in the back of the military helicopter and lay down. I threw a U.S. In- army wind issued olive green wool blanket over her, with a little confession to make. I whispered between breaths, just in case Nick caught a sudden appearance and caught me off guard. You sickly, you sickly wear women's clothes. Geez, no, I couldn't stifle a turn and chuckle. The girl was funny, even in the most stressful of situations. I appreciate that. I know her name goes now. Well, what? That's good to know. So what is it? I can't tell Nick about any of this. So there's no idea you're coming whatsoever. She let out a huff. Ah, so when you said no, no... Nobody would suspect the thing. You really meant nobody. Jeez, I didn't believe this. I thought you... I thought he uh, he knew a girl was coming, but he didn't have been informed about our identity. No, please, just keep quiet until we get to the city. Get to the city, OK? Fine, she mumbled, but you should have told me him. A minute later, Nick jumped into the helicopter and put on the headset. Ready, bro? I jumped into the clothes policy and buckled up. Yep. I've got the list of antibiotics we need for the doc. Sure thing, my big brother always played by the rules. I made him perfect for the military, of course. But exactly the way I couldn't tell him about Val. He would never have agreed to sneak her out of the city. He did nothing against the rules. Never, ever. He lived by the moral code, 100%. I don't know where he heralded that for, though. Because I don't, I don't mind bending the rules when it was appropriate. I turned over the helicopter engine. And moments later, we... I lifted off and climbed slowly into the sky over Kelly's Island. The island was far from Sundusky, Idaho. There was certain Caesar Point was located. I truthfully ridden all the s- several teen roller coasters in the amusement park. Well, before anything happened, I never forget the genuine rush I f- felt. Kelly Island is a perfect place to go for refuge because you're completely surrounded by water. Zombies couldn't swim, and it was a backup. They were towing walls to the, to keep the undead from. They were towing walls to keep the undead from the printing the safe haven. That was helped her sleep easier at night. Was they had a nice cottage that was owned by my grandma. She lived next door in a spacious bed, and a breakfast that she ran between the zombie and breakfast that she ran before the zombie outbreak. All the Lake Erie Islands had become. Re- Views of multitude of people, citizens of making lions here, living almost normally with exception of knowing that outside his walls that hungry only dead hungry all hungry dead were walking in order to everyone to maintain such a lifestyle, the city had very strict rules in place. One of these rules stated the person's bitten execution was mandatory, without exception whether the victim was a mayor's son or housekeeper's daughter, the safety of the many could not be compromised by the life of the one. We should be, we would be back before supper. We should go back before supper, Nick called out. Yep, I, 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 I yep, I yelped over the noise of the helicopter. Halfway there, I heard a loud pop, something like a car back flying. The wall and the floor and walls began to shake and vibrate. My head jerked back and then surged forward. That forward as the helicopter plunged, cutting through the white clouds like a knife. Looking out of the window, I noticed a plume of dark smoke swirling outside the helicopter. What's happening? Nick fumbled frankly with the kind of trolls. Malfunction. We're going down. Mel what? I asked with a gasp. 